So my wife, AKA the Fortnite goddess, AKA a person that has literally more Fortnite wins than I do, said she needed a new gaming PC to help her kill some noobs, so I hooked her up. <laughs> like a lot. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. So as you can probably see, I went a little overboard on this one. For those of you that don't know, my wife is not a gamer for the most part, but she does like to dabble into Fortnite every now and then, and she said she needed a new gaming PC to continue doing so. Rather than sticking to a budget and building her something quote unquote normal like a sensible person would do, I decided to go absolutely all out on this one, and I must say I'm super happy with how this turned out. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about what's all inside this beast. We're gonna benchmark the heck out of it with with not just Fortnite, but all of that though, after a quick word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by GVG Mall, an online key reseller with our favorite Windows 10 Pro keys. If you're looking to remove that nasty Windows 10 unactivated watermark on your latest gaming PC, head on down to the links in the description. Here you'll find a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for under 17 bucks, but we want it cheaper than that. Select buy now and enter the discount code ZTT18 for an exclusive 18% off discount, which drops the price down to just 13 bucks. Go through the rest of the purchasing options, I'd recommend PayPal, and within a minute or so you'll get your Windows 10 Pro key. Now on your PC, click start and type in activation and press enter, choose change product key, paste in your new key, and bang, Windows 10 is now activated. This is my personal way of activating my PCs, check out my purchased order history here, so grab a Windows 10 key for yourself with the link in the description using discount code ZTT18. Alright, so real quickly before we run through the parts list, we of course have some disclaimers, and the first one is that this build makes absolutely zero sense if you're on a really tight budget. Most of these parts I did not have to pay for and they were sent to me by some awesome companies and most of the part choices were definitely chosen based on aesthetics and not price to performance. The second disclaimer is that all of these parts are indeed linked down in the description. And finally, yes I am being serious about my wife wanting to play Fortnite on this thing and that's about all she will be playing at least for now. During one of my Twitch live streams, twitch.tv slash by the way where I stream every Tuesday and Thursday, my wife and I hopped on a stream together and ran through a play-by-play -play interview of her first ever battle royale win. I was so surprised that this happened as she's not a pro in gaming in the slightest bit, but somehow she managed to outlive 99 other players on the map and get the dub. Since then, she's managed to pull off a couple of more victories. The night before filming this video, we actually racked up two duo wins and I'm still feeling the high off that, but I just can't let her lacking PC performance be the reason for dying any longer. She was definitely way more interested in making the PC look baller, rightfully so in my opinion, so that's why this is more of an aesthetic build than anything. With that being said though, let's jump into the parts list. Starting with the CPU, this here is an Intel i5-10400F, which was my personal choice because they have been providing a lot of us with a ton of value, while all these Ryzen CPUs are still virtually all out of stock. The 10400F is sitting right at that sweet spot of around $140 to $160, it's rocking 6 cores and 12 threads, and even has a nice max turbo frequency of 4.3 GHz right out of the box. The motherboard it's plugged into is this incredibly clean and beautiful NZXT N7Z490, and big thanks to NZXT for sending this one out. This is objectively one of the cleanest looking motherboards out there, but it's also packing some good performance with Wi-Fi 6, 2.5 gigabit ethernet, multiple M.2 ports, and a plethora of other port and RGB options. This is, however, where the build wouldn't make much sense financially if I was personally paying for it. Spending over $200 on a motherboard and only $150 on a CPU is a little crazy, but if you're gonna question it, please refer to my previous disclaimer about how this build is more about aesthetics than anything. Next up, we get to the RAM, and this here is the Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro 4 by 8 gigabyte pack that's clocked at 3200 megahertz. Also just as clean and good looking as the motherboard, filling up all four of these RAM slots with these sticks is just so incredibly satisfying to look at even when the PC is powered off. Following that we have the GPU and this choice was clearly the most overrated one of them all. This here is the Nvidia RTX 2080 Super Founders Edition which was honestly used because it was the best GPU that I wasn't actively using in the studio at the time of making this video. Well except for crypto mining but never mind. Now believe it or not this is actually not a terrible pairing with our one $150 Intel i5-10400F like you might initially think. In terms of price, this is incredibly unbalanced, but if you take a look at the recent hardware unbox video, he proves that as long as you're playing in 1440p or 4K, all of these modern day 6-core CPUs have virtually the same exact performance as the bottleneck is on the GPU, and that's exactly what you want for gaming. Clearly, if you were parting together a sensible PC, it'd probably be best to transfer a little bit of that budget from the GPU to the CPU to balance things out a bit more, but as we're about to see in the benchmarking section, this 
combo can absolutely destroy some 1440p gaming still. Before that though, we gotta talk about the storage, and this here is the SK Hynix Gold P31 1TB M.2 NVMe SSD, and big thanks to SK Hynix for hooking us up with this one. Rated as a consumer NVMe drive with DRAM on the SSD tier list, this is a dominant NVMe option with max read speeds of up to 3500 megabytes per second and write speeds of up to 3200 megabytes per second. These 1TB models are currently sitting around $135 on Amazon and are rocking some seriously impressive stats for still just being a PCIe Gen 3 SSD. Next up we get to the power supply, and this was originally supposed to be a white Corsair RMX 750, but since that didn't arrive on time, I simply used an EVGA 700BR that I bought on EVGA B stock a while ago. 700 watts is more than enough to power build like this, and since we have these white cable extensions, it's really not a big deal, at least aesthetically for what's underneath this PSU shroud. Speaking of the shroud though, this case that we are using today is definitely no easy choice at all. As some of you saw from the Twitch live stream, I originally started this project off using a different case, but since I didn't like the white color tone of the other one, I decided to resort back to this one, which I already had in the studio, and that being the Be Quiet Pure Base 500. This was actually the home of another ridiculously nice gaming PC build that I did a while ago, which you can check out in the upper right hand corner. And although this wasn't the case my wife and I originally planned for, I think it matches our aesthetics absolutely perfectly. This Pure Base series is focused more on acoustics than anything as it's whisper quiet, but I'm just a huge fan of the overall minimal and clean design to it. Getting into a couple of extra ins and out components, we have the CPU cooler, and another big thank you to Corsair for sending this one out. This is their Hydro H100i RGB Platinum White. It's rocking a 240 millimeter beautiful all white radiator, clean AF white tubes, and to be honest, my only focus with this one was ensuring that I installed it in the least controversial mounting position to avoid the PC building vultures here on YouTube. As we're about to see in the benchmarking section, the 10400F was absolutely no match for it, and our temperatures stay very nice and chilly. Just as a quick note, Corsair recently released their white version of their Capellix AIO, and that thing would have looked even better in a build like this. Corsair also helped the cooling situation and aesthetics more so than anything with the fans, and here I use five of their IQ QL120s that are simply just stunning. These can be completely customized with Corsair's IQ software and are whisper quiet, so these were definitely a no-brainer option for a higher-end build like this. And finally, the last part we have here are some much-needed cable extensions, like I mentioned earlier, and just like my last several builds, I went with this kit from Formula Mod. The color shade is absolutely perfect to match the rest of the build, and they always come pre-installed with the cable comb, so that's why they have been my go-to choice. All in all, here's what the final parts of this is looking like, and if you were to replicate something like this, obviously this would be a crazy expensive gaming PC. Once again, big thanks to NZXT, Corsair, SK Hynix, and NVIDIA for helping me out with all these parts, as I believe we definitely achieved the overall goal of building a ridiculously overkill and powerful, but also beautiful PC for the Fortnite goddess herself. Now it's time for the benchmarking section, and because this needs to perform well with Fortnite, we'll start with that. You're watching me play here and not her, just as an FYI, absolutely destroyed during this benchmarking run, and here in 1440p in pro settings, I got an average FPS of 273. Yeah, I think it's 100% safe to say that we got the job done already. This gaming PC can easily destroy Fortnite at these settings, and there's officially now zero excuses why my wife doesn't rack up more Victory Royale wins. I'll keep you guys posted on that. Next up, we have Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, and in 1440p with ultra settings, I got an average FPS of 143, and this was definitely running smoothly enough for me to land some obnoxious headshots. All right, some Call of Duty action. Starting off with a nice kill and a nice death, but yeah, the percentages are looking pretty good. About 90% on the GPU and only 50% on that CPU. Looking pretty nice, and that, did I really, okay, I got the kill, let's go. Sit down, I'm even lagging, doesn't matter. If you're as good as me, lag doesn't even matter. And we are talking about internet lag, not, not computer performance lag, just for the record. Hello, sir. <laughs> Don't you cross over to my boat. This is my boat, son. I've actually been taking my Call of Duty more seriously. I mean, look at that. I'm just headshotting people across the map. That's serious. Where are the campers camping today? Don't, don't come camp down here, man. All right, guys, I've made the executive decision to switch to the sniper rifle. Let's see if we can get a couple kills. Here's one. What? How did I kill him? Headshot. Sit down. Sit down. Just letting you guys know I'm starting to heat up with the sniper rifle. That guy had zero chance. My time for to get into my scope is just way too slow. Oh, that was nasty though. Hey, come on, man. I was celebrating. Campers, man. Whoop. What? Whoop. <laughs> Triple kill, baby. Let's go. All right, I'm done. 
Next game. Following that, we have the new and very demanding Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and in 1440p with ultra settings, using the built-in benchmarking tool, I got an average FPS of 174. After that was Rogue Company, just letting you know that I'm starting to heat up again in this title as of late, and in 1440p with ultra settings, including that baked in 150 FPS cap, I got 149 frames per second. Counter-Strike Global Offensive tailed after that, obviously I'll probably never cool down in this one, and in 1440p with pro settings, we got just a stupid FPS average of 331. Counter-Strike time running well above 300 FPS. Uh, this game is absolutely no match for this high end of a system. So we're going to make this quick and headshots only. Let's go. Uh oh, we have it activated. Headshots only. Oh, oh another one. Oh, the off guard may be making a serious re-entry to these videos as that guy just saw. And that guy. I'm the op god, man. I'm beginning to feel like an op god. Sit down, bot Xavier. Why do so many people put bot in front of their Steam names? I don't get it. Like, bot Wayne? What I've noticed over time is that the people that do put the bot in front of their names, those are actually usually the good people. So maybe it's like a clan, like bot clan. Now I know what you're thinking. Oh, hello, bot Troy. Sit down. Bot Wayne. Oh, you got him? Okay, that's fine. Oh, that was terribly timed. Sorry, man. Let's try and get one more kill. Okay, yeah. Let's move to the next game. That was too easy, man. See? After that was Rainbow Six Siege, and just like always, using the built-in benchmarking tool with 1440p in ultra settings, I got an FPS average of equally stupid 299. Next up was Borderlands 3. Check out those temperatures, by the way, for both the GPU and the CPU. Definitely staying nice and chilly in this build. And here in 1440p ultra settings, I got an FPS average of 70. And finally, for the last gaming benchmark, we have Valorant. They really need to put me in higher skilled lobbies with this title. And in 1440p with high settings, I got a high FPS average of 229. All right, it is now Valorant time, aka headshot time, aka double kill time. There's a little lag there. My internet connection is not good today. Computer is running really nice above 220 FPS. Obviously Valorant is no match for a high-end gaming PC like this. But speaking of being no match for something, come on. I'm trying to get a good transition here. Thank you. Oh my God. I might actually need to get an ethernet cable over here because, just kidding, I'm still good to go. That was a nice headshot. This is not good for games like Valorant, man. Like, <laughs> you kind of need a decent internet connection. It doesn't affect me too much though. Back in it. Should I get an ethernet cable or should I just stick to Wi-Fi? Wi-Fi it is. Yes, indeed, Wi-Fi it is. My goodness, what a shot. It's just all about your mental game, man. I don't let lag slow me down. Okay, did you see that? I'm literally, I know I killed him, but I'm literally going to get this Ethernet cable right now. My goodness. And then just like always, we'll round out this benchmarking section with 3D Mark Time Spy. And for the first time in months on my YouTube channel, we cracked the 10,000 score milestone and settled right on 10,606. This PC is absolutely crazy, but chances are if you're still watching this build, then you're into these crazy higher end builds like this one. So feel free to click the video that's on the screen now and that'll take you to another one. But just like always, I hope you enjoyed this video.